Hi, this is Vic Mignogna, voice of Edward Elric and Full Metal Alchemist. Captain Kirk and Star Trek continues. And do you know what the best podcast is? I'm going to tell you. Five-ish fangirls, yeah! All the way to episode 175 of the Five Ish Fan Girls podcast. Wakanda will no longer watch from the shadows. We cannot. We must not. We will work to be an example of how we, as brothers and sisters on this earth, should treat each other. Now more than ever, the illusions of division threaten our very existence. We all know the truth. More connects us than separates us. But in times of crisis, the wise build bridges while the foolish build barriers. We must find a way to look after one another as if we were one single tribe. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five Wish Fan Girls Podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like we do every week. We're on the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Sally from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello everyone. Hello. Hi guys. And happy anniversary, ladies. Yes. 75. Yes. A big number. It is. <laughs> yes. Big number, big movie to talk about. <laughs> yep. <laughs> kind of a Very big Very fitting. Yes. But we will. We planned it that Did way. not plan it that way, but we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, we will get uh, to that. Say serendipity. Serendipity. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes serendipity works for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. It does. Quite a bit. Yeah. First, let's get into the news before we talk. The big blockbuster movie. So, we actually do have some, some news this just week. Just a little bit. Not nearly as much as last week, but just a little bit. So, first, uh, some convention news and... Um, Recently, uh, Gen Con, with, uh, in an article in the Indiana Business Journal, um, has announced that, um, a, that uh, based on current sales, and sales for, ta- for badges for Gen Con went on sale last month, um, at its current rate, um, it is on track to sell out again, like last year. So, and, this, and this next year, they don't even have a big anniversary yeah. wasn't last year the 50th yeah yes. last year was a big anniversary they were used to years not an anniversary year but it's just it's gotten so big that apparently everybody wants to go so um so if you're thinking uh, of going to gen con uh, uh, i would uh, not wait <laughs> get your tickets now yes so um and this year <coughs> is going to be uh, just as big as far as scope. Um, once again, they are going to be in Lucas, the stadium. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to put down there. I know like the, there was some kids stuff down there, but I'm assuming they're not going to do the museum again. Um, so what they're going to put in that footprint, I guess we'll find out in August. Um, <laughs> so... Um, but they'll uh, come up with something. They'll come up with something. So, um, and then uh, they expect to host more than fifteen thousand ticketed events at this year's con. Um, So that's a lot. The programming book will once again be the size of a phone book. And for those that don't know, a phone book is what used to be take your contacts list from your phone and print it out Mm -hmm. (laughs) in book form that's what a phone book was kids Uh, it was your your contact list plus everyone else in town plus everyone else all right you know in your city and then some Mm -hmm. yep and depending on the size of your city sometimes there's a whole separate book just for businesses Yes, and sometimes, too, with the food section, depending on what big of a city you run. Exactly. All the restaurants that are, including some menus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, for some reason, you can't, because Gen Con also has recently announced um, that they reached a, an agreement with the city of Indianapolis to stick around through 2022. 
<laughs> Which that's a long time. So. so, Gen Con, get on it. I've already got my badge, so I will be there once again. I'm tired just thinking about it, but <laughs> should be a good time. Oh. All right, moving on to TV news. Um, they are, I, I have not watched Riverdale, so I have, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss there, but. Um, I've seen a few episodes. Charlie. Yeah. That's okay. Um, I know Andre from Black Nerd Comedy really loves it. So. Yeah. Well, I saw this news. I was like, "Oh, they're doing a, a Sabrina the Teenage Witch," and I didn't connect that they were. It was in the Riverdale universe. I'm like, "Oh, well, yeah. this is still cool anyway." Yeah, it's it's but, not going to be the the um, bright, happy go lucky Sabrina the Teenage Witch that we all remember from the nineties with Melissa Joan Hart. Uh, right. <laughs> this so. is not sure. This is not your mom and dad's Archie or the Archie that you were growing up with. This yeah, is, no, this uh, is a lot darker. Updated take. This this <laughs> darker. this is this is these these franchises on the CW is what it is. So you know, yeah. think Arrowverse, but, like a, but with Archie and Sabrina. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Archie comics dark and gritty. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. anyway, um, so the the, the news is Gomez. Uh, better known as Missy from Doctor Who, the master. Yep. She's going to be in the teacher witch room. Uh, one of Sabrina's teachers at Back High. Yeah. And she ends up getting possessed and tries to lead down. And it's Netflix. Yes. Series. So this won't be on CW, even though Riverdale it is. Yeah. Well, the CW, I mean, yeah, the CW and Netflix kind of have an agreement anyway yeah. that, that, that all their shows go up on Netflix, like, not long after the season ends, so. Yeah. So, it's not which a huge is why, This is why everything's stuff. not on Hulu anymore, which is why I really haven't been watching, which is, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, yep. yay, Missy is going to be being not as Missy, but she's it's Michelle Gomez, but we love her. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. she's probably gonna be fabulous because <laughs> right. she's fabulous. So. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean this in the nicest way possible, but she's probably gonna play a really good, uh, essentially witch, <laughs> possessed <Yep>. witch. <laughs> so. well, well, that, that's that's what the show Super is. That's the premise. So yeah. there's a. <laughs> I hope they don't keep her accent. I love her accent. Yeah. I do too. It's just, it's lovely. Yeah. We'll find out. So, I mean, at this point, you know, the, the news is slowly trickling out as far as casting and when it's going to be available. And they, they did release, and I, I missed it. I think I remember seeing like a headline briefly on Facebook like last week or whenever they made the announcement that they did release a picture of Salem and just based on what I knew of like Riverdale and something, um, I, I'm not sure what I expected Salem to look like because he's a cat, um, but I wasn't expecting what they actually posted because he looks exactly like the Salem from the Melissa Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a black really? cat. Yeah, I mean the, the cat looks exactly. I thought maybe he'd be more stylized or something. No, he looks exactly the same. <laughs> so I don't know if he's going to be, you know, a combination of an actual cat and then like an uh, animatronic or CGI or what. But just like if you just looked at the picture and you didn't read like the caption or anything, you'd just be like, oh, that's Salem. From Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but you would think it was the one with Melissa Joan Hart. It's like, he looks exactly the same. It's the exact same looking cat. <laughs> I like cats. <laughs> oh, 
Um, and then, uh, speaking of Doctor Who, and I guess this is one of those where it's, it's a good thing we did not record yesterday, um, <laughs> type of things, um, but, um, the BBC slash Doctor Who, whatever, today, like, in the last couple of hours, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was still at the movies. Yeah, really, um, released the new logo. For the upcoming series. So, which, you know, since Doc... I mean, from the beginning, from 1963 forward, the logo has changed. So, uh -huh. you know, you, you kind of have to have your head in the sand to not know that the logo has seen different variations in 55 years. Almost 55 years. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, and a lot of times it does change when the Doctor changes. So, kind of like the, the TARDIS console changes, and sometimes the TARDIS outside changes, too. Um, so, this it's not necessarily a big surprise that the logo changed. It is different, though, mm -hmm. than anything we've had in the past. Um, but still fits. So, and I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like I, I didn't I even like think it. about I didn't even think about the logo change because you know everything else is changing and stuff. But yeah. you know it changed when Stephen Moffat took over, and obviously the RTD had that one. And you know I, I looking at the new one, I yeah I kind of like it. I like it. It's kind of it's kind of trimmed down, or I, I don't know. It's more simple than mm -hmm. the other one that we've kind had, where that one was sleek, yeah. mm -hmm. sleek streamlined, different. It's you know it's a it's a simple font but there's you know some some stylized things going on in there so it's like yeah I, I'll pretty good so far mm -hmm. yeah. and and then um, the, apparently there was an event at, there was a BBC worldwide showcase panel at Liverpool's Echo Arena. And uh, Jody Whitaker was there, and I'm I'm assuming our new showrunner was there too. But uh, you know, you look at the picture, it's like, oh, it's Jody. Uh, <laughs> it's a new doctor. Who cares about who else is in the picture? Well, with she her? she's been in all the pictures and promo stuff. Yeah, Chris Chibnall. I'm like, I, I finally, I I haven't, I never saw a picture of him until I picked up a, a, a an issue of Doctor Who magazine. One of the libraries in our system gets a subscription, and I and and I. It's so like, oh, I'm going to start checking this out. And I picked it up, and there's a spot for the showrunner to have a column every month. And it, there was this picture. I'm like, oh, so that's what he looks like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen him before. Pretty much. So it was, it, it was probably there in the picture. You just didn't know that's who he was. Probably. I would say, if you, I don't think I'd be able to pick him out of a lineup. Uh, sorry, Chris. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that uh, event today, they announced that Doctor Who will be returning this October. So, we don't have a specific date yet, but at least we have the month. So. And, and kind of thinking about it, you know, depending on when when the the show starts you know what, what day exactly it could actually butt up against christmas so christmas could be uh, if they do have a christmas special i haven't heard yes or no on that but yeah they could they could use that as part of the season if they wanted maybe mm -hmm. possibly i don't know they could possibly so not easter saturday so sorry sean but <laughs> Hey, uh, October is six months after Easter. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I don't know. That is true. Mm -hmm. It's a delayed Easter Saturday. Yes. By six Second months. Easter. Yeah. Second <laughs> Easter. Something like that. Yeah. Yep. Cool All right. I like it. Yeah, I do too. I'm totally down. Hopefully, um, hopefully sooner rather than later we'll get a specific date. So yes. <clears throat> well, it, it'll it'll it's still some time away, so we're uh, need to tell Seven, us what's going on. Because yeah. we're gonna have so yay more ten ten episodes. 
is what they said? Because it's going to be a shorter season? Mm, yeah, ten episodes, but the episodes will be a little longer. A little longer, longer so... so if you did, yeah. if, if there was not an episode the Saturday before Christmas, because that would make sense, you know, don't mm -hmm. have an episode on Saturday and then have another one on Christmas, which Christmas falls on a Tuesday this year. Um, so yeah. if there isn't an episode the Saturday right before Christmas, 10 weeks would make it October uh, 13th. Oh, so, yeah, they don't even have to go that far into October. Yeah. An October start date to, to, to hit, hit up against Christmas. Because I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe like the last weekend in October. No, it's no. the middle. No, if, okay. if, if, if the Christmas episode was the end of the season, mm -hmm. you know, <coughs> and not counted in the 10, it would be October 13th would be mm. the date that the season would need to start. So... Interesting. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. That's yeah, because I'm like, that's that's about the time, like, that's when librarians usually start. Because <laughs> they, they usually go over Christmas or something like that. So yeah. I was like, wow, that's quite a late start date. But, yeah. all right. So. Better late than never. Uh -huh. Yep. Because we've gone never, so well, not never, but we've gone with <laughs> practically we'll practically never. none. <laughs> so, yeah, I will take it. So. Cool. All right. What's it for news? So the uh, book club poll is up and available for voting. So. Get on it. All the things are good. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with that, let's move on to this week's topic. And I will say, sound the spoiler alarm. We're not necessarily going to get into spoilers on purpose because Chrissy's not seen it yet although Chrissy has said although she, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I have said it's okay if you, if you go into spoilers I knew I wasn't going to get to see this one right away yeah. and we're still not sure when we're going to get to see it it's just life has, has uh, kind of gotten in the way of things so it's not it's yeah. not that we don't want to see Black Panther it's when are we going to do it yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I told the ladies you know don't I, so I'm like yeah I, I don't care if I get spoiled or not I'm yeah. going to see it it's just I just didn't think it was fair to them to have to tiptoe around things just because. Yeah. Well, and I, the thing is, once we once we get into it, um, honestly, and I was saying this before, you know, we started recording and you weren't on yet, Chrissy. This, as far as plot is concerned, the like the actual movie plot is pretty predictable. The most spoilery things actually are a couple of deaths, and then it's actually the post credit. And the mid credit scenes that are the most spoilery <laughs> mm -hmm. as far as okay. ripples into the rest of the MCU. So, um, but that being said, yes, we will be getting into to spoilers, including things like character deaths and, and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so if you've not seen Black Panther yet and you don't want to be spoiled on it, although at this point you'd have to stay off the internet, I think, um... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, we Which there are worse things to have to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. there, there, there will be spoilers for Black Panther. So walk away, come back, listen to this after you've seen it. If you don't want to get spoiled on anything, so that being said, Black Panther, the latest installment in the MCU. Um, I did not count, but somebody said this is num entry number nineteen in the MCU. <laughs> So I don't believe it. <laughs> wow. So this is the the last movie before Infinity War, um, and um, it's not bad. I, I will give it. It's not my favorite movie in the MCU. Um, for me personally, that title is still held by the Avengers, the first Avengers movie. <laughs> that is my be all end all absolute favorite, even after 
all of these movies after 19 movies. Um, but it is a good, solid film. I, I, will, I will give it that. So I know some people are like, oh my God, this is the best MCU movie ever. As far as a comic book slash MCU movie, I don't think it, I don't think it can be the best ever just solely based on like plot and um, because the plot is actually fairly predictable. There isn't really anything that happened or I'm like, ah, I didn't see that coming. Um, uh-huh. You know, I, and this is in no way <laughs> meant to, you know, poke fun of the fact that, you know, it's Black Panther and it's set in Africa. And obviously there's a lot of African symbolism and, you know, his, his superhero persona is a cat, but essentially this movie is the Lion King is what it is. It is the Lion King meets James Bond is what this movie is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's not a bad thing, but well, you know, it's not, it's not ripping. It's not, it's not ripping it off. If you're, if you're ripping yourself off. Well, that's true. Yeah. I mean, as far as Lion King goes, I mean, it's Disney, they can do what they want. You know, if they want to rip them, you know, if they want to, you know, take influence from one of their movies, go right on ahead. Um, but it has a lot of James Bond elements too, which is not Disney, but you know, if, if you look at James Bond, the, uh, with a few exceptions, the plots to a James Bond movie are very straightforward. It's more Shuri about could give Q a run for his life. Yes, I will. I will say, um, you know, Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa, uh, slash Black Panther as a superhero, but also as a king. Um, mm-hmm. His character is very. Because we don't see a lot of him in Civil War. What we do see is awesome, but to see him in his in his home, in his element, with his people, with his family, um, while he's a very good king, his overall character is kind of flat. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's almost due to the situation he's in because, yes, he is a superhero and he did these amazing things in Civil War, but once he comes back to Wakanda and is crowned king, he has to be a king. I mean, if you've ever watched video of, like, Queen Elizabeth and, you know, out and about at, like, functions and talking to people, there's this aura with royalty where they're... It's like you're not you're not your own person. Exactly. You are the title. That's exactly you... what it is. Is you you it's the title and you almost can't be yourself with some instances. You know, when he's in front of the rest of the people or he's with the council, you know, he's very king T'Challa. Now you get him alone, like with his sister in her lab. Yeah. And, you know, they're doing their funky handshake and they're pissing on each other and poking fun. And she's flipping him the bird and that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, that's, you when he gets, that's when he gets to be T'Challa. Yeah. Not King T'Challa, just T'Challa. T'Challa, you know? yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah. it's a bit different. Don't freeze. Yeah, you froze. Yeah. He's like, I never freeze. And then he does freeze. Uh, so, um, but, you know, the the whole... Um, you know, the, the plot, while somewhat predictable, some of the elements were predictable, there were some things that were interesting. The cold opening was not what I expected. Um, the movie started and at first I almost hadn't realized that the the movie had started because it didn't start with the Marvel logo and the, the sound, you know, that music clip that we're used to hearing with, with Marvel. It was this cold open with this narration telling the history of Wakanda and how Vibranium Right, that lands in Africa and the people, these tribes of Wakanda um, figured out how to mine it and source it and do all these things and how there were these five tribes and four out of the five got along but one didn't and that sort of thing and then there's this, this plant that gives whoever consumes it the power of the Black Panther um, and that sort of thing so it's you get a nice history lesson but it was a different cold opening than what we've gotten with other Marvel movies um, but it is important to the plot to understand and, uh-huh. and visually it's really cool because it's all animated but it's not 
Um, it's it's using some of the same technology, or the images look like they're made from the same technology that Shuri uses, um, with like these nanobytes um, that can do all sorts of things. They can create models and they can hide things, and then that and ends up going into um, upgrading T'Challa's outfit as Black Panther and that sort of thing. Um, and then we get some, a nice flashback to the nineties in Oakland, California. And we get some history of, um, T'Challa's father, um, and the family issues that, that happen there that end up uh-huh. creating this snowball effect that ends up pushing, you know, the cause of the plot that we get. And then it picks up the week after the events of civil war. Um, so this takes place literally after Civil War. You know, T'Challa's on the plane headed back to Wakanda watching the newsreels of the bombing at the UN and talking about the arrest of Zemo. <laughs> so, I mean, it's right after Civil War. <laughs> so you could watch Civil War and then go watch Black Panther and it'd be like one long movie, <laughs> essentially. So, um, but... You know, um, the I, it's cast really well. You know, I love the the choices that we do that they that they made. Um, I have not seen Michael B. Jordan in anything else. Um, if if I, if I love the 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 uh, the meme or whatever that's been floating around on Facebook when it's with Chris Evans and then Michael uh, B. Jordan, it's like two out of two human torture torches have been redeemed by the Marvel by Marvel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I've seen that clip. Fantastic Four. Yeah. Oh, that's why I recognize him. <laughs> that, and it, it'll it'll be interesting, you know, if and when the MCU does Fantastic Four, if the, you know, the if if they'll uh, improve on the actual Human Torch at all. I I hope so. Although who, you it know, says it could hardly be worse. Yeah, I I told Chauncey I said if you if you want to make it in you know if you want to be a comic book you know, star, if you want to be in the MCU, apparently need to be cast as the Human Torch by Fox first, um, and then wait a few years, and then Marvel will come knocking and give you a better role, and then you're golden. (laughs) Now that Disney owns the Fantastic Four, that hopefully third time's a charm. I'm, I'm kind of thinking with the Fantastic Four, it's kind of, it's going to be like the the Hulk and Spider-Man, third casting, boom, you're good. So, whoever's the Human Torch next should be good. <laughs> you know, you're, you're you're in good hands with with all state, or in this case, Mickey Mouse. Uh, yep. <laughs> I can imagine, like, if they did like a Avengers and Fantastic Four clash. I think they've done that in the comics. Oh and Chris yeah. Evans feel yeah. Captain America. That I can imagine the jokes. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we're, you know, Sherlock Holmes jokes with uh, with with Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh yeah, in Infinity War. When there there better be some sort of Sherlock Holmes joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is too good of an opportunity to pass up. <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah, uh, Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger, amazing villain, um, and a sympathetic villain. He's not like. Some mm-hmm. of the some of the others where, um, you know, they're like, you know, he's he's almost like, um, he's sympathetic in a way, almost like Michael Keaton in Spider Man Homecoming, right? Where he's and been maybe a touch of whiplash, yeah, from Iron Man too, yeah, where he has been dealt a bad hand and he's bitter about it, um. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he feels like his family has been wronged and he needs to do something about it. Um, So, and that's uh, good. I think that makes a strong, a strong villain Um, is one where it's like, you know, um, you you don't necessarily care for them, but you you kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're way more layered and that makes them... I think it almost makes them more 
threatening, I think, because mm-hmm. because you can almost see you can almost put yourselves in their shoes. You're like, if if I'd gone through the crap that this guy had gone through, I might be in the same place. Unlike someone like, you know, Red Skull, where he's just evil. <laughs> he's just yeah. nuts so well, evil it's... and there's no there's no sympathizing with him whatsoever. <laughs> It's almost like you know, you you know, you you've, you've uh, he's he's got nothing left to lose, so he's just gonna take it out on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I can't think of his name, but in 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 Doctor Strange, the one the one guy who you know he's at the end, you can just tell. Okay, in the next one, you're gonna be the villain. Oh yeah, Wong. Yeah, yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and then, um, I think, um, I think a lot of, (laughs) and we we mentioned her already, but, um, uh, I think that you've got to give a lot of props and, you know, keep an eye on this gal because I think she's got a bright future ahead of her, uh, Latita Wright, who plays Shuri. Who's the tallest sister? Tall. She tall. so good, yeah. so so good. You know, she is young. She is smart. Um, she is she's modern, but in a good way. And uh-huh. she has a bright future. Both Shuri and the actress playing her have bright futures ahead of her. But Shuri yes. definitely could go a long way within the MCU with... If she and Peter Parker team up, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, well, and, I mean, she she is the cue to T'Challa's James Bond. She mm-hmm. is the, mm-hmm. you know, and because, you know, Wakanda has kept themselves hidden, you know, true Wakanda has kept themselves hidden from the rest of the world as far as what their ability to do. The Wakanda that the rest of the world sees, all they see are people with, you know, shearing sheep and making blankets and other, like, textiles and that sort of good. It's a, it's a third world country. You know, they don't have technology, that sort of thing. But the true Wakanda is so advanced technology and weaponry and tr- you know, transportation and communication. And a lot of that comes from Shuri and her ability to tap into what vibranium can do. Because mm-hmm. at this point, it, we've seen it. You know, it's Captain America's shield. It's the strongest mm-hmm. metal on Earth. You know, it's, it's bulletproof. You know, he can, he can twit and, you know, do all sorts of amazing things with it, but it is so beyond just, like, this bulletproof material, and its applications that Shuri comes up with are absolutely amazing, and when she and Tony Stark meet, and Tony Stark realizes (laughs) the type of tech that's available that he has not thought of because he has not act he's not had access to vibranium, he's going to be, first he'll be, he, he will be pissed and then yes. he will probably fall in love a little. Um, and try to recruit her. <laughs> and try to recruit her. And Tom will be like, no. Yeah. Not yeah. She makes, you know, and, and some of that, uh, you know, uh, yes, having the access to something like vibranium definitely helps. But even without the vibranium, she is just so stinking smart. She almost yes. makes Tony Stark look like an amateur. Yeah, and a little, a little too smart for her own good. Yeah, yeah. And some other tech, I'm pretty sure Coulson would drool, and oh, yeah. Fitz and Simmons would die. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I, I have a question, and maybe I don't know if the movie goes into this or if it's even thought of. So if uh, so, so Wakanda has all this all this technology, but nobody knows about it. How like like who are they who are they this or is it just for Wakanda that they keep this secret or like like because I'm I'm looking at this thinking how how do they keep this secret if they know how to use all this stuff they just don't 
export it no, at all? They, they don't export it. They do use it because there are people that travel outside of Wakanda using Wakanda's tech to do our things when we when the movie starts after the the, the you know the the history lesson and the flashback um, T'Challa is on his way back to Wakanda but they make a stop on the way there um, to pick up um, Nakia who's played La, La, played by Lapita Nyong'o um, and um, she is on she's a spy and because okay. like Wakanda's got this, the part of the history lesson is Wakanda has like these spies um, and these people planted all over the world. Um, and Nakia is um, undercover trying to rescue these young women that they don't explicitly say, but based on like actual real life. They're more than likely have been kidnapped and are going to be sent to, you know, probably sold into the, like, the black, like, sex slave market or something <laughs> like that. And she's undercover and she's there to, um, s yeah, stop the, uh, the, the slave traders and rescue these women. And she's got some, uh, Wakanda tech with her. Um, and then T'Challa ends up you know, come into, he has to pull her out of the mission, but in the process, they, you know, they, they take down all the, the bad guys and knock out their, uh, their trucks so they can't go anywhere and that sort of thing. And they liberate all the, all the, the kidnapped girls. And, um, there's a boy too. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, but yeah, they don't necessarily say what they do with everything. <laughs> Because they keep it so secret, but, uh, you know, but they, they, they talk about having, you know, these people all over the world. So I'm assuming that those people are sent things to do things, but it's very covert. It's not, you know, unlike at the end of the movie when T'Challa makes the decision that the true Wakanda is going to open, you know, reveal itself to the world the rest of the world and be more open with their like di diplomatic, um, you know, type of, uh, you know, I guess endeavors, um, that it's all, it's all been on the down low. It's like, hell, you know, stop a gang here, stop a slave trade there, you know, boost a, you know, boost up a, a neighborhood here, that sort of thing. But it's all very on the DL. Uh -huh. So, okay. <clears throat> and man, I guess I shouldn't. I, I guess I shouldn't expect uh, comic book economics and and, and yeah. foreign relations. Yeah. Well, and uh, when when in, in the real yeah. world. <laughs> when we meet Claw in Age of Ultron, um, and you know, and Ultron goes to him because he has this stock of vibranium. When Claw stole them. Wakanda made the rest of the world think that Claw had stolen everything they had as far as vibranium. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of gave him an out to, you know, continue to be on the down. Although Claw knew better, but he had a big old, you know, buttload of vibranium, so he didn't care. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, he could, he could use it and sell it on the black market to the highest bidder and make a a crap ton of money um and claw is just nuts uh so <laughs> and yeah. we we definitely get to see more of that in this movie um first off it's great to literally see andy circus uh <laughs> you know not see his For performance once. for motion capture but actually get to see andy circus and he's yes. such a fabulous actor, you know, uh, even with the motion capture stuff, you know, I said that after seeing The Last Jedi, you know, him playing Snoke, you know, he does not give enough credit for what he does for portraying these characters that you never actually get to see him, mm -hmm. you know, playing characters like Gollum, like Snoke, like Caesar, you know, in the Planet of the Apes and that sort of thing. It's like... Um, so to get, you know, to, for him to portray a character like Claw, where we actually get to see him, you get to see just how good of an actor he is, um, without all the motion capture and him being replaced by a CGI character. 
Um, and Claw is just, he's nuts. But it is the most entertaining, like, you know, it, it's, you know, he is exactly what um, uh, Bruce Banner, it, how Bruce Banner describes Loki in the Avengers. He is all sorts of crazy. You can, he's like, he's, you can smell the bag of cats, you know, <laughs> just absolutely bonkers. And he knows it. Mm-hmm. And he plays it up, you know. There's this. He th- revels in it. He, yeah, he absolutely the revels in it. Room, he's like, I know you can see me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, know, it, you know, there's this scene where they they go to South Korea, and again, this is where like the James Bond element comes into it. Is they they go to South Korea oh, yeah. to mm-hmm. this casino to try to uh, apprehend Claw, and um, T'Challa. And Nakia and um, Okoye. Okoye, who um, go get there first, um, you know, and it's it's a hidden, you know, they got to talk to this little, you know, Korean lady who's manning the door. And the and, front's a fish Yeah, the front, yeah, is like a you know, seafood market, that sort of thing. Yeah. So they're there, and then this casino, you know, it's like something you'd be seeing in a James Bond movie. Everyone's dressed of the nines, and there's, you know, money everywhere, and people are playing you know, casino games and that sort of thing. And then Claw shows up with his, you know, like five black Cadillac Escalade SUVs and come walking in the door with his cronies. And it could, but the group before could not take guns in. Yeah. But they, they come walking in and they, you know, he, he and his, this group would just walk in with this saunter and they look like they're about to drop like this year's biggest hip hop album. <laughs> exactly. Well, I think that was Claw's cover. It's like he was like a record producer or some sort of. Well, no, rapper, no, because because when when he makes contact with um with um Ross Martin Freeman's character, and I think he even says something like, "Oh, you look like you're about to uh, uh you know drop a drop an album or something," and Claw says something about, "Yeah, I can send you the URL to my SoundCloud." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and now people are actually calling for like for Marvel to release like a mixtape that would be like Claw's mixtape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Oh man! <laughs> no, from the little bit that we got, I don't necessarily know if I want to hear it. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't necessarily be like Andy Circus doing, but like you know, he could pick like you know his favorite like hip hop songs or whatever, and be like, <laughs> it'd be like awesome mix. But for Black Panther, you know, <laughs> so, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, he just, he just totally plays up just how eccentric and, you know, nuts. God love Martin Freeman, mm-hmm. but he really needs to talk to his, you know, as much as I love seeing him, he needs to talk to his manager because he, I mean, he does it well, but he really needs to start branching out beyond Dude who gets into a situation and doesn't know how he got here. <laughs> when he gets to what? about a thousand percent done with the situation, right? Pretty much. I mean, when, yeah. you know, I, you know I, I, to, to not get completely spoilery, but something, you know, there's an incident and he ends up having to go to Wakanda with T'Challa and everyone. And when he sees Wakanda for the first time, he was, it was pretty much the same look and him walking around staring at everything as he did in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know what? Apparently the guy knows where his bread is buttered. Well, that's true. <laughs> but he's got like... it down so well, he's like, what do I need anything else for? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, he's standing and staring and I'm like, did you ever get your ta- towel art? <laughs> yeah. Someone hand him a towel. <laughs> oh my and you have to laugh a little you know if if you're uh you know of of that that the that fandom when uh ross and claw yes. meet face to face for the first time at the casino and they're like talking to each other and i leaned over to chauncey i said it's bilbo and Gollum." <laughs> there's a meme yep. going around <laughs> yes. like 
It's like they're they're like you know sniping at each other. I'm like it's the riddle scene in the Hobbit. <laughs> I was it's actually updated for the MCU. <laughs> like not an actual nod, but like maybe a subtle nod to him. But... Yeah. Well. I don't. Maybe they couldn't figure out a way to work it in without it being take without it being too up. Yes, but that would have been funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe. Or who knows? Maybe there's a blooper scene somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get on the. They're like, real. this one's for the fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well. Hopefully. <laughs> so. But, uh. But. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a good movie. It's It's got some pacing issues. Um. It's, um, and the CGI in some spots, especially the big fight between T'Challa and Killmonger at the end is lacking with the, when they both have the Black Panther, their, their Black, their respective Black Panther suits on, um, the, the CGI looks, it's not terrible, but this was a $200 million MCU movie you would, yeah, you, it's like, at this point, you should be able to do just a little better. Um, and like I said, the plot is somewhat predictable. You know, at one point, T'Challa disappears, and, you know, his family thinks he's dead, but of course, we're all watching, like, well, he's not dead. We know he's not dead. Uh, <laughs> not just because... We know he's in and not just War. because we know he's in Infinity War. It's just like you know he's not dead. <laughs> it's <laughs> like it's like this movie would be over, you know, forty five minutes sooner if he was dead. So he can't be yeah. dead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so sometimes I wonder, like they they think they have to play it safe with some of these plot elements. And yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, and again, I haven't seen the movie yet, but yeah. just kind of your description. But I mean, it sounds like they. It okay anyway. Yeah, I mean, it serves a point because they have to open it up for Killmonger to become, to take the mantle as the Black Panther. Because, I mean, if you watch the trailers, you see the, the him, you know, with the, the outfit appears and it's the, it's the black with the gold as opposed to T'Challa's, which is the black with the silver. Um, so, you know, if you've watched the trailers, you know that Killmonger gets a Black Panther suit at some point and, beca you know, takes up the mantle as Black Panther, but he's the bad guy. So, mm -hmm. but they have to create that opening for him to take up that mantle and get a Black Panther suit. And, the, and this was just the easiest way to do it based on the customs that they have in Wakanda. Um, when they crown a new king... Because of the history of Wakanda, and there was these five fighting um, tribes that eventually four out of the five found peace, and then the other one went up into the mountains, and, you know, they still live, quote-unquote, peacefully, but they're kind of separated from everyone else. Um, so whenever a new king is crowned, they have this ritual where each tribe, they open it up for someone from that tribe to contest the crowning of the king and then they fight um they can they can fight the you know new king and try to take the title from them um and we see that once and then it happens again with killmonger so um so it, you know it's it's based on uh, uh what what we can assume is a long standing tradition although i'm assuming it's been a while since they've done it because before t'challa was king his dad was king for 35 years um there may have been people <laughs> who may have tried to contest but i doubt it cuz they've been living in peace for the most part um you know all things considering um so, and, and that's one of the, the, the things, too, is, and you know, if you look at the overall plot or the themes, I don't want to say the plot, but the themes of the movie, a lot of it is about family and history and tradition and, you know, doing things for the sake of tradition versus, you know, breaking tradition to try to keep up with the times 
and the changes of the world, not just, you know, when they're cornered, the planet, but the planet as a whole. Um, you know, those themes are very strong throughout the movie, and they're important themes, too. Um, and you see that with, um, you know, the way the characters interact with each other, some of the, the customs that we see, the, the way they're dressed, the costumes are beautiful, absolutely beautiful, um, and not just the ceremonial stuff, too, like when it, yeah, T'Challa's, you know, um, you know, coronation or whatever you want to call it. He doesn't have an actual crown, so I don't really want to call it coronation, but I guess that's the, the closest equivalent. Um, yeah, I was trying to think myself what to yeah, call it. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, they, they all have on ceremonial garb that's appropriate to each each tribe, um, but even in their day-to-day -day outfits, um, you know, Shuri's got some great outfits that she wears, um, uh, Okai and the, the rest of the, the women warriors when they're in uniform, um, is absolutely visual, visually beautiful. Wakanda is just gorgeous. Yes. Um, I, you know... Matt, yeah, for for as disappointing as the Black Can Black Panther suit CGI is, the CGI that they, and the green screen that they did for Wakanda is beautiful, and the fact that that was filmed in Atlanta, Georgia, is <laughs> mind boggling. <laughs> they put their budget. <laughs> yeah. They're like, so, oh, we don't have enough for the for the for the for the suit. Uh, well, at least Wakanda looks pretty. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think I think they thought be, because what they did with the suit, from it going from like a suit like what Peter Parker wears as Spider Man, to this um, nanotechnology with nanobots, um, and mm -hmm. can uh, including the helmets are completely encased in his neck piece. And everything lives in there, and all he has, and it responds to his thoughts. And uh -huh. base, and considering where he and Killmonger end up fighting, it's darker. There's some flashing lights. There's, you know, they're in the, you know. Um, so I think they thought maybe they could get away with slightly less than stellar CGI because of the where the fight was taking place, <laughs> but. Um, I think they kind of failed in that point. Um, but the re the rest of Wakanda is absolutely beautiful. I was saying to, to Chauncey and some other friends who had seen it, I said, you know, if Disney, I mean, I know they just redid Soren, the attraction Soren in both California and Florida, because um, it used to be Soren over California and not Soren over the world. So you, visual, you visit places like... Um, Paris, France, and the Great Wall of China, all sorts of things. But if Disney ever wants to do a Soren or something like that over the MCU, I will be first in line to to do it to to be an attraction where you are essentially flying over places in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like Wakanda, like Asgard, you know, Avengers Tower, in New York City, the Astral Plane from Doctor Strange. It would be so cool. I can't imagine that the that the that they hadn't uh, they hadn't been thinking about this. Oh yeah, I, I'm sure something like that is going to happen eventually. But I kind of want it to, you know, happen like yesterday. <laughs> so, you know, even even T'Challa when they when they when they fly through the kind of force field that separates, you know, third world Wakanda, the outfacing Wakanda, for, you know, from the actual Wakanda. And you see it, and he's like, this never gets old. And I'm like, yeah, I can see why, because uh, that view is amazing. <laughs> I would want to come home to that every day, too. <laughs> it's because it looks so good, and it's so beautiful. Um, oh, what else? The music. The music is really good, too. Uh -huh. And not just the... It is a good mix of um, 
hip hop. Um, and this is the first MCU movie to have like an actual like album. Like we've gotten like the soundtracks for some of them where it's like the the you know the orchestral type music that plays in the background. Um, and then obviously we've gotten like awesome mix volume one and two for Guardians of the Galaxy, but this is the first movie to have like an actual album with like popular type music that's not necessarily in the movie, like all the awesome mixes, but it's not necessarily the background music too. Um, and I know Kendrick Lamar was the, the person who spearheaded that and apparently is doing really well. Um, but then the like more cinematic music to a lot of African influences, very, uh -huh. um, ethnic sounding and it's, it's sounds really good. Um, I know people have complained in the past with the MC movies, how the music tends to be forgettable. Um, that people don't, you know, it's like if you, if you think about, you know, Thor, the dark world, the music, you know, you couldn't hum it, it to save your life. <laughs> Uh, that's not the case with Black Panther. The the music is is really good. Both the the use of some popular hip hop music and the the more cinematic but African sounding music too. Uh -huh. Um. So, I mean, for this not being my favorite movie, I have a lot of good things to say about it. <laughs> I know. I'm like sitting here going, like you said, this wasn't your favorite, but I mean. I mean, that's, you know, says, says a lot about the movie itself is like, you know, it's still, it's solid. It, it, it's still, it's solid. Yeah. Which I, that's probably what, you know, most Marvel movies are is they're solid. Yeah. If not super awesome. I got to watch it a million times like Guardians of the Galaxy or something else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this, I mean, I'll, you know, when it comes out, I'll definitely get it. Um, yeah, you because know, I have to own them all. Uh, <laughs> you know, but it, it may not necessarily be one that I'm going to watch over and over and over again, like the Avengers or Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, but it's it's definitely a good, solid introduction. There's a Stanley cameo, of course. It's not my favorite Stanley cameo. Um, it's still a good Stanley cameo because you know every Stanley cameo, you know, anytime you can get Stanley, is a good time. Um, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it's not a blink and you miss Stanley cameo. It's definitely one where it's like, oh yeah, there he is. Yeah, yep. <laughs> he gets a deep. Yep, I'm yeah. here. Yeah, he, he's there. Yeah, you, you know, unless you got up to go to the bathroom, you're not going to miss him. So, you know, you're you're good there. Um, and then there's the there's a mid credit scene, and then there's a post credit scene. The mid credit scene is more. Um, I guess not necessarily fallout because it's not necessarily a bad thing. Fallout makes it sound bad, but more the, the, um, Oh, what's the word I'm trying to find? Um, the, the next step, I guess, in Wakanda and the way they conduct themselves, I guess. And it's essentially T'Challa making maybe, maybe maybe setting up a sequel. Well, it's a, I think it's setting up the sequel, but it's I think I think T'Challa's decision to make the true Wakanda public will have far-reaching ripple effects, not just in the sequel, but the MCU as a whole. Uh -huh. um, but I imagine just you know just from what you've described, I imagine it'll be like. You know, the, the equivalent of when Tony, um, at the end of Iron Man, said, mm -hmm. you know, I am Iron Man. Exactly what it is. <clears throat> no. No. And then the, the post credit scene is um, not... If you don't know your comics, it's, it's a nice setup for Infinity War, but it's not like... It's not like Thanos appearing on the screen, like, okay, I'm going to do it myself type set up um it's the reintroduction of a character that we have not seen since civil war uh <laughs> who in the comics is known as the white wolf and um yeah so that was not that was not just a a poke at you know his this color of his skin 
Although I love, I love how uh, Shuri when uh, when uh, Martin Freeman's character shows up and she sees who they they have with him, and she's like, "Oh, another broken white boy for us to fix." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a good chuckle. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a, you know, if you, if you want to, to read up more, read up on the, the white wolf in the, the Marvel comic books. Um, and how much of that particular storyline they actually decide to use, um, will be to be determined, I guess. So, um, but it's, it's not like a, you know, a not down, like, oh my God, now I can't wait for Infinity War type tease or like a, like a trailer or something like, like what we got at the end of Captain America, the first Avenger for the Avengers. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing like, nothing like that, but it's, it's, you know, once the, the movie ended and we got up and. You know, the lights came back on and people are shuffling at them. Like, look at Sean and I'm like, well, Infinity War's next. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, it was a good ride while it lasted. Now everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket. So. <laughs> Isn't that how it always goes? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm super excited for Infinity I mean, but I'm excited anyway for Infinity War. I've got like Marvel on the brain. I keep having dreams involving characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, like, my brain is already, like, wired for MCU and Infinity War and everything. It's crazy. It's, and we still have a ways to go before May. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited. And I think, I think this was a good, you know, it's, it's serious, but it's not too serious. Um, yeah. as far as implications, uh, for the rest of the MCU, um, it, it does have some humor, uh, and a lot of that comes from actually the women, you know, Shuri, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nakia, okay, um, you know, T'Challa's mom, uh, mm-hmm. played by Angela Bassett, <laughs> who looks Great, yeah. fabulous at her age, uh, yes. yeah. um, and- just and just the mom sense that she had when she knew Shuri was giving her brother the bird. Yes. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry, yes. <laughs> I do have five of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, like, like I said, this is it's this is this is not my it's not my favorite. It's not the. I don't think it's the best MCU movie as far as. Um, you know what we think of when we think of a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie I do think that as far as Black Panther is concerned that it is very very good and very very important because of its significance and I think that's the biggest thing Um, you know obviously the four of us were all white, so we cannot speak of, you know, the, I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to say something wrong, but, you know, I can't, I, you know, none of us can speak of what it's like to be African American or African or a person of color. Um, but um, I can see, based on what I'm hearing from people I know and, um, both, you know, actually in real life and just people I know via Facebook and that sort of thing who are people of color, how important this movie is, um, Uh because of the representation, the storyline, even, you know, even if they were not African, you know, these, even if they were Mexican or Asian or something, the, the overall story and that quote I used at the beginning of the the episode from T'Challa is true regardless of your race. You know, that, you know, that keeping yourself isolated from others is never going to end well. You know, we've only got this one planet and we all have to live here. So we need to figure out how to get along. 
uh, for better or worse. And that is so, so important um, in this day and age. Um, you know, people are, so, you know, with, with this age of, you know, technology and social media and being able to be connected 24-7, 365 days a year via Facebook or Snapchat or whatever, that it almost seems like we are more isolated from one another than ever. And it's, um, it's sad and it's scary. And um, I think hopefully the message from this movie um, resonates with some people and... Um, makes them hopefully realize that, you know, at the end of the day, we are all part of the same tribe, and that is the human race. And we all need to act like it. Um, I also think that this is that all the women in this movie are so strong. Um, uh -huh. And just great to watch, you know, they're, they get to the big battle at the end. And just in this, you know, this short movie, you know, it's, it's not long compared to some others. You know, I think it's average length um, movie, but um, people like Shuri and Okai, you know, I found myself worried for them. <laughs> <laughs> when oh, they yeah. when they too. get to that big battle at the end, I'm like, I like you. Please don't die. <laughs> you know, I want to see more of you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's you know to the fact that, um, you know, in in Wakanda, yes, the king, you know, is the Black Panther, and you know he's, um, he's so um, he's so strong and um important but i love the fact that um and i can't for the life of me remember what the name of the 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 women are um but like their main um like i don't want to say military but like their main like group that protects them. you know it's it's own it's like the mcu equivalent of Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, and you know <laughs> the 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 Amazons, um, where it's it's the women that are the warriors, and you know uh, Dora Milaje. Dora Milaje, there you go. Um, you know they are they are so strong, and I wouldn't want to cross any of them. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know there there are a lot of of male warriors you know, in Wakanda too. And we see that. Um, but it's the Dora Milaje is just, <laughs> you know, you want to be on their good side. You yeah, better hope that you, you better them. hope that they're, <laughs> they're fighting on your side and they're not fighting against you because you are screwed. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I think that, um, Shuri especially could, have very positive and I think significant um, ripple effects throughout the rest of the MCU um, down the line. And I posted the I posted this question to <clears throat> um, uh, the the folks over at the True North Nerds podcast, and I think they're recording tomorrow. I think their their review of Black Panther. Um, but they had done an episode, a couple of episodes ago where they were kind of doing, you know, blue sky imagineering. If you were in charge of the MCU, you know, what characters would you like to see, um, be brought in? You know, it could be any character from any comic book, you know, what characters would you like to see? Um, that sort of thing. Um, and if you're paying a te if you read comics, um, especially Marvel Comics at the moment. Um, at the moment, in I think it's the Invincible Iron Man um, line, is the current Iron Man, and she doesn't actually go by Iron Man. Her name, she actually, they call her Iron Heart. 
Um, but her name is Riri Williams. And she's this 15-year-old African-American genius who's at MIT. She's an MIT student, so the same as Tony Stark. Uh, <clears throat> and she has created her own Iron Man armor. Um, and um, she was brought up in the, the True North Nerds that, you know, she would be a cool character to see brought into the MCU. And I think having a character like Shuri, I think, opens that door for someone like Ironheart. Um, because as much as I love him, Robert Downey Jr. cannot play Iron Man for the rest of his life. <laughs> Um, eventually he's, you know, he could probably continue to play Tony Stark. Oh, yeah. Um, but he can't be Iron Man for, you know, a significant amount of time in the future. You know, it's just, you know, the, the role is very physically demanding. Um, so, but to keep, you know, an Iron Man or Iron whatever type character in, in the MCU and, you know, to help keep it um you know fresh and bring in some some younger some younger talent you know someone who could <coughs> if they wanted to you know take on the, take on this role and they're young enough that they could do it you know sign on for you know five six movie contract um because their age would not you know be a factor that Having someone like Shuri, who's young, who's a person of color, who's a woman, who's a technological genius, I think, and, you know, I'm just spitballing here because I do not know what they're thinking. I, you know, I can't, I can't, I'm not, I can't mind read what Kevin Feige is thinking, but I, I don't think the fact that, you know, having someone like Shuri is a coincidence and the fact that there's someone like Riri Williams in the comic books right now is not a coincidence. Um, and I would not be surprised that when Robert Downey Jr. decides to, you know, hang up the, the Iron Man suit that it may not, may not be right away, but I think we may see a character like Ruby Williams come in. Um, and hopefully be accepted. I would totally be down for it. Uh, Cause I love Shuri um, oh, yeah. and to have another character like her would just awesome. be amazing. I think it would mm -hmm. be absolutely amazing, you know, to have, you know, uh, you know, these, these great, smart, talented, capable female characters. Um, you know, it's, it's only going to get better as the, the MCU rolls on. Um, because they have so many amazing characters to pull from, not just classic, you know, Captain America obviously goes, goes back like 75 years. Um, but you know, you look at the characters that they have now, um, you know, someone like a Reba Williams or, um, she, ca she's not Captain Marvel. I think she's Miss Marvel. One of the two, um, like I said, I don't, I've said before, I don't read the comics. I just know what, you know, I hear friends who do read the comics talk about. Um, but she's either Captain Marvel or Miss Marvel. One of the two that she's um, a young, um, a young woman who is Muslim, I think. And I cannot for the life of me think of her name. Um, but... Um, but anyway, <clears throat> but I mean, if you look at the current state of, of the characters that are out there um, in the Marvel comics, that there there's so many possibilities. And by making movies like this, it's opening those pathways to introduce a more bigger variety of character of different ages, different ethnicities, different genders. Um that sort of thing. And I think that's just, that is going, and I think they have to. And I, and that's the thing is I, you know, um, I don't think, you know, that I would like to think that Marvel is not afraid to, um, try 
different combinations of of characters because that I think that's ultimately what's going to keep the MCU going. Um, because you you know as as much as I love Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth, you know we don't need you know four or five more Thors or Captain Americas or Iron Man movies. You know we need to keep the MCU fresh. Um, if we want it to continue. And the only way to do that is to introduce new characters, whether they're taking the place of a character, you know, like a Captain America or an Iron Man. Um, or if they're, you know, a character we've not seen before, you know, like the introduction introduction of the Wasp, um, <clears throat> you know, in Ant-Man and the Wasp or Captain Marvel, you know, who we're getting next year. Um, characters like that is what's going to keep the MCU alive um, and fresh and keep people returning to the box office. I mean, at this point, there's no sign of it slowing down. Black Panther's been in the movie in the movie theaters for what four, five days. It's made four hundred million dollars or something like that domestically. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, there's no sign of it slowing down, but, you know, considering how long-term they like to plan out things, you know, Kevin Feige, if you happen to hear this, um, you know, please do not be afraid to introduce, you know, new characters and new ideas, because that's you know, that's going to keep the MCU from getting stale. You know, keep, you know, keep pre-film as many Stan Lee cameos as you can. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> Even if you just got to put Stan in different outfits in front of a green screen, saying different random things, and just, you know, stick those on a hard drive somewhere. <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> but other than that, you know, we, you know, keep keep it going. But don't be afraid to uh, yeah. to try new things. Yeah. Whether, even it, 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 will, it will eventually, I mean, it will eventually kind of, you know, peter out. Because you know, you look at you look at different genres over time. Like I don't, know, I think I think westerns that lasted maybe like 10, 15 years. Uh, you know, eighties action movie yeah. type of thing. That 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 wave. You know, we don't really have that anymore. Now superheroes they've been doing this for ten years now. So eventually, and you know, with with DC and, and some of these others, oversaturation is going to to take its toll. So that in mind is. Yeah, but, but like, like you said, I mean, still going pretty strong. If they can, you know, if we can make it through to what they they have planned out already, then great. Yeah. Any. Anyway, so sounds like sounds like Black Panther's a world a worthwhile movie to go see in the theater. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the, the the visuals at the very least, we're, we're, you know, on a big screen, you're you're gonna get a much better payoff. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. So. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna we're like we're gonna go see it. I'm just it's it's just life has gotten in the way, and some reason February is a busy time for us. Yeah. But anyway, but uh, so. You know, if any of our listeners out there have seen Black Panther and they want uh, and want to chime in, what they or what what they what what their thoughts were or anything else that we've talked to talked about in the past, you can email us. Our our email address is fiveishfangirls at gmail dot com. Also visit our website the fiveishfangirls dot com and link to there's links to all of our social media, Facebook and and Instagram and. YouTube seems to our events and things. We also have Twitter, and and so you can check all that out. We also have a Patreon um, page, an Amazon store, and T-shirts. That that's always you can support the podcast financially as well. And thank you to everyone who does does that on a regular basis. It's very helpful, and we definitely appreciate everybody who who does. And if you know, follow you can is like a dollar or so it definitely helps so Ooh, me. and just 
listeners who, because we, 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 we see your comments and it's, it's very cool to see all that. So keep it up. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome sauce. All right. Well, we will be back next week with. Uh, oh, we need we need to discuss this after we're done recording. But we will be back next week. Hopefully, everything goes well. Knock on wood with a special guest. So stay tuned. <laughs> So, with that, uh, with that little uh, tantalizing carrot on a stick to keep y'all coming back next week, uh, <laughs> we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany and Bethan saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Sally from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana, Wakanda forever! <laughs>